Hello and welcome to the Car Kerala channel. So are you buying a car, used or new? Are you starting your research, looking at tips and tricks on how to make the best deal out of it? In today's video, we're going to share with you some tips, some tricks and things you need to know when you're buying a new car or used car and some red flags and a lot of information. And joining me today to give you a more of a three dimensional look at, at the whole buy, car buying experience is my good friend, Toyota Jeff. Hi Jeff, how you doing? Hey, it's great to see you AMD. I'm really happy to be on your channel and I'm hoping that I can help your viewers with the questions that they've had on their mind about car selection, car research, car buying. Let's see what I can do to help. Thank you so much, Jeff. Jeff, to share with the viewers, tell us a little bit about your background with Toyota and in the car sales world. Yeah, absolutely. I've started in the automotive industry in 2005 and I did sales for all that time up until the last two years and now I'm in charge of social media for my dealership in Raleigh, North Carolina. I also have my Toyota Jeff Reviews new uh, YouTube channel where I've done almost 1,000 videos and I take a lot of pride in helping people buy cars basically. How to pick up, uh, how to pick out cars, how to research cars, how to buy them and how to learn more about them after so I really do want to be a resource and I, I think I can help. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Jeff. Guys, his channel is awesome. I highly recommend you check it out. I'll leave the link for the channel in the description of this video. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So starting with the new cars, you know, Toyota usually has pretty simple options and list of things that you can look at. You can easily go to their website and look at all the options available. But I wanted to give you more of a three-dimensional look into this, what you really need to know before you head over to the dealership to start looking at new cars, to start deciding what's this, what's that. And this is what I wanted to ask you, Jeff. What are some things that from your experience, you see people come to the dealership not prepared, not knowing that you think they should know, they should research before they actually head to the dealership to decide on buying a new car? You know, I, I think that's a, it's a really interesting question and it really could go in any different number of directions. But the real important thing, you can research the manufacturer that you want to choose, what model within that brand, what trim level, what dealership you want to work with, and also even the salesperson that you can work with. And I think that all gives you kind of a leg up because one thing I know people are doing more and more and that's researching at home. How do you research at home? Well, everything that you do is going to help you either support your decision to buy a new car or go in a certain direction with the brand, or it's going to turn you away from that. So People do an average, I think I heard the statistic of about 17 hours of research online before they ever go to their first dealership. That can be from any different platform. It could be from YouTube videos, company's website, the manufacturer's website like Toyota or Lexus USA, that type of a thing. It could be from Car and Driver, Consumer Reports. There's just so many different ways. You could also do research with your family and friends. What did you buy? How did you like the experience? Where did you buy your car from? So I think the things that you could probably do in that 17 hours of time, which sounds like a lot, some do more, some do less, you can really kind of hone in on and focus in on what brand and what model. If we're in Toyota, I really want that Toyota Highlander. Well, what can you do to find that out? You can watch a video that shows the different Highlander trim levels. I've done some. So now you won't come into the dealership wondering, I don't really, I know I want a Highlander, but I don't know if I want a hybrid. I don't know if I want an LE, XLE, Limited. Look at the features that are standard on each one. The LE might not have a power driver's seat. Maybe the XLE does. So if that's important to you, you can eliminate that LE as long as it fits your budget range. Similar to a Camry. And you kind of hit on it, AMD, when you were talking about how a lot of Toyota models, they're very easy because they are pre-configured with certain options. If you're going with the Camry LE, you're going to know what you're going to get. And then all you have to do is decide on, do I want a moonroof? Do I want an upgraded audio package? Do I want a convenience package? And just three or four different choices that you can decide, yes, I want to bump or upgrade myself up. So you can do research in that in the meantime. And another thing I think you can do, let's say we want to buy a Toyota 4Runner. I know I want an SR5 Premium. That's a pretty tough 
reliable vehicle and it's going to do what I need it to do to the beach, to the mountains. So you've supported that decision. Where are you going to buy it from? Now, if you're in a smaller community where you've only got one Toyota dealership, you'll probably want to go to that one first. Otherwise, you'll be traveling 45 minutes to an hour. Logistically speaking, let's start with the local one and see if they can help us and be a good resource. Now, in Raleigh, we have four different Toyota dealerships within about 30 to 45 minutes away. That complicates things. The water's just got really muddy. And I'm sure in the Chicago area, you have just as many, if not more, choices. So where am I going to buy that forerunner from? Well, you can do research in the meantime. I would look at each company's website. I used to do this for my channel where I'd look at three dealerships. Let's look at their websites. You can kind of get a feel for their philosophy, for their style, their, for their approach on customer service and sales. You can see, let's say I look at dealership A in the Toyota brand. Well, their website says they offer a powertrain warranty for life. And then they don't really offer anything else. Well, dealership B, they offer oil changes for life and free tire rotations for first 50,000 miles or something like that. The next one might offer quick, easy service with shuttle service and oil changes. So just from those websites, you can already feel that, hey, I could really use those oil changes for life. I'm going to focus in on choice B. You know, it's like, let's make a deal. I want door number two. Maybe you want something else. So that could give you an idea of where you want to go just based on their website and then check their inventory. Maybe a smaller dealership within that community, they've got 50 new cars on the lot to choose from. Well, maybe dealer A is high volume. They have 300 cars to choose from. So perhaps the selection would be easier. Perhaps pricing would be a little bit different than a smaller community. It's it's hard to say until you really dig a little bit deeper. Now, the other thing you can do is, I think it's always nice when you know and have an established relationship with a dealership and their salespeople. Some people, they've always bought vehicles from Peterson Toyota, and they've always worked with Jake Johnson, right? Because he's treated them well. He's super easy to work with. But let's say you don't have any experience with that. Where you want to go next, I think, is talk to the people. Talk to people like me who buy cars and AMD who buy cars and your aunt and your uncle and your grandma and your neighbor down the street. We'll check there. But also go to Google reviews, go to Yelp reviews, and especially go to Dealer Raider. Dealer Raider is an industry website and publication. They will tell you what other people think because you leave reviews. And for example, if you go to a dealership uh, that has maybe 4.1 stars out of five, and they left 1,200 reviews. Well, that's pretty good. But let's say the next dealership has 800 reviews, and they're 4.7, so they're, they're rated better by the community. So maybe you want to go to those reviews and say, Peterson Toyota was so easy to work with. They were not high pressure. They helped me find what I wanted to, even when I didn't know what I wanted. That's a good review. That's kind of what I might be looking for. And then maybe you go to the next review and they say, Peterson, Toyota, they were so quick and I was not there a long time buying my car. They helped me hone into what I was looking for. I wouldn't recommend anybody else but them. You know, there might be one or two bad ones. You kind of have to weed out. If you see one that's a really long review that has three paragraphs that says, I didn't like them, they were terrible and this and that, look a little closer at that review because sometimes it's somebody that has a bridge to burn and you kind of have to take that one with a grain of salt. Now, if you saw 10 in a row or 10 out of the next 20 reviews that were negative, that might give you a good clue that that's not the dealership that you want to work with. So if it's just one out of 200 reviews that you go through, I think we can be safe in saying that maybe that was a rarity as opposed to the rule. The other thing you can do is go to salesperson reviews. Let's say you go to Google review for, uh, I'm at Fred Anderson Toyota in Raleigh where I do uh, sales uh, and social media work. Well, it says, Jody at Fred Anderson Toyota was so easy to work with. He was kind, he was genuine. Hey, that might be somebody I wanna work with. Even though you don't know Jody, I got a good vibe. Let's see if we can find some more. You find three more that said, you know what? I felt like I was buying a car from my best friend. He was so easy to work with, he was fun. He made the process, believe it or not, a little bit of fun, which is not a lot of not a lot of people can say that buying a car is fun. Most people don't like the process. So if we can make it as smooth and easy as possible, look for those kind of reviews. You'll see on dealerrader.com. Go to dealerrader.com, type in, oh, I don't know, um, a dealership in Chicago that you know. 
type in their name, and then look for their reviews. It'll list ratings and the number of ratings by salesperson. It'll tell you the top rated salespeople. Look at those reviews. Maybe they have, uh, I think on mine, when I was doing sales, I had like 111 reviews and it was perfect rating. So I was really pleased with that. But the comments, people were sincere with how they rated me, how they talked about me. One of the things I think that sets me apart is I'm kind, I'm genuine. I really care about what the customers want. I don't want to waste their time and I don't want to be pushy. You'll find those in the reviews that are about me. So I would hope that somebody would see those reviews and they would want to select me as their salesperson. So who knew that you could select your salesperson, AMD? But that's yeah. big research that you could do and it gives you that foot in the door and you feel like you're not walking in like a cold call. You actually know somebody and that helps. That makes a huge difference, Jeff. You know, thank you so much for all the insight. These are really interesting information. I will say one thing and I'll add this from, from my experience looking at people buying cars. If you've done all your research, you want to test drive the car and you're still not sure, wait a second, do I like the car? I don't know about this. If that's the case, find the same car or at least maybe not the same trim and options that you want, but find a similar model rental car. Some dealerships will actually offer you 24 hour test drives, service rentals or whatever. Find a rental car because Usually when you go test drive a car, the most you're gonna maybe test drive it for half hour tops, maybe an hour if you're really pushing it, but you're not gonna be able to live with the car for a couple of days. See how your back agrees with the seat, see how you like the features, see how it feels on the highway. If you're that kind of person that really wants to get to know the car before you commit to it for 15 years, rent one, rent a similar one, and now you're really gonna know what's what. So let's talk about used cars. And apart from my mechanical stuff where I tell you, check this, check that, this is a common problems with this car, common problems with that car. The, once we've kind of arrived at, okay, well, this is the car that I like, we've researched, we've honed in that this is what I want. And you go to the dealership and here's the used cars. Jeff, what would you say some of the tips when you're looking at a used car at the dealership, you arrive, what are some negotiating tips? What would, you, what would you recommend to the viewers that they do when you're looking at a used car at a dealership? I think that's a great section and that's kind of a whole monster in itself. With a new car, you just know you're gonna come in and I'm gonna look at a Land Cruiser and it's gonna be brand new and shiny. What are you gonna do? What do you look for if you're looking in the range of a two to seven year old vehicle that fits the budget? Kind of have a good idea of what you're looking for. If there are certain brands that you're looking for, then narrow into that. I want Toyota, Lexus, or Honda. Those are reliable in my mind, so I wanna stick there. Or if you know you just want Toyota, then stick there. And then do you want something that's gonna fit your lifestyle or how you're gonna use it or your family dynamic? We need a minivan. We have too many people in the family. We've got four kids, we've got a dog, we're gonna go on trips. Or do you need a three row SUV or is a two row SUV okay? Do you need a larger sedan, small sedan? The other things you can think about is how much space will you need for cargo space? Will you need a large trunk? Will you need a hatchback? Are you gonna have to put things up on top, coolers and kayaks and extra luggage and things like that? So I always tell people the first thing you can do is know in your mind kind of what you wanna get. In other words, think about the largest trip that you're planning to take in this next vehicle that you're gonna purchase in the next three years Will your stuff and will your people fit in that vehicle, first of all? Now, if you've got a larger three-row sedan that, or a three-row SUV that you're going to use anyway for trips, that might not come into play. But think about that and will your stuff fit? So you got to get the right size, the right features. So that's a good way to come into it. Or if you know you want a Camry, then well, you're going to be laser focused on that Camry. So I think you can have an idea of the vehicle in mind, first of all, when you get there and then you can see what they have available. If you have to go to multiple dealerships, I think the average person visits 1.2 dealerships during a car purchase. The other thing you can do, and this goes with new cars too, is have an idea of what your budget is. There are a lot of people out there who are monthly payment driven. We've gotta make sure we have enough money allocated for bills, for food, for housing, things like that, but also for our car. So you gotta make sure that you have enough planned in your budget for not only the vehicle itself, but you're gonna need car insurance. How much will that car insurance be? And does that fit in a budget level 
that you're gonna be comfortable with once you actually buy it. The thing I can really tell people is, keep an idea of how much you wanna spend either per month or total dollar amount and try to stay within that. Now, if you give yourself some flexibility, that's probably the best situation for you and the person helping you buy a vehicle. I don't want, we'll use monthly payments. I know a lot of people wanna go with dollar amounts. That's fine too. I don't wanna go above 20,000, but I could go to 23. So maybe 18 to 23 would be comfortable for me. My sweet spot is 20,000. Now, if you're somebody who says, I just cannot go above 350 a month for the car payment itself, then don't go above 350. You'll have to backtrack, just kind of work your way in and back it up, the vehicle and all the other factors that go into a car payment. You'll wanna know the price of the vehicle, the length of the term that you're gonna use, the interest rate, all those things go into a monthly payment. So just make sure that you didn't come in saying, I can only spend 425 a month and you walk out at 625 that could strap you in your budget and it could take a little bit of the celebration and excitement off of buying a car like, oh, how am I gonna pay for this now, AMD? What have I done? We want people to be buying a car and be happy and to be excited because you wanna show it off to your family and friends. You don't wanna say, what have I done? So please keep your budget in mind. Now, if you choose to bump yourself up to a higher payment or a higher dollar amount, that's fine. But try not to let the car dealership or salesperson be the one to do that. You have control of your own financing and your own budgeting, so you are in control. That's research you can do. Same with new cars. That's that's really good advice, Jeff. You know, it is so easy to get carried away in the moment and you're there, you're excited. You sometimes people are just tired. There is like we've been looking at all these cars, we're tired, I took days off my work so I can go and find a car and it just becomes a hassle and you tend to just say, you know what, let's just do this and do not go over your budget and I will, I will add something to that. If you're buying a car that is a one or two year old car that has very low miles, you always have to look at its price and the same model that is new. Because I see so many people end up buying a one-year-old car with 3,000 miles. And typically, and I'll, I'll say this from the experience of my dealer, the loaners, the service loaners, you know, they, they only keep them for six months to a year. They usually have less than 5,000 miles. They tend to be so close to the price of the new car. Honestly, if you're going to stretch your budget, I would stretch it to buy a new in that case only. Buying a used car, you want to there a big enough stretch between it and the new model. Because of course, the new one will be better. It's brand new. It's, it has full warranty, never been used. But if you're going to buy a used car, it needs to be a big enough stretch where it's worth it. What's the big stretch? That will depend on you and your finances and everything. But... Don't go buying a car that is six months old, a year old, has three, 4,000 miles for $500 less than a brand new one. That just doesn't make sense in my opinion. So let's talk about some red flags about dealerships or the whole car buying experience on the sales department side. And of course, I'll leave this one to Jeff. Jeff, you have seen it all been through everything and you know your department very well. This is one thing right here. Let's make the process smooth and easy and comfortable because you're going there to have a great experience. Buying a car is a lot of money and salespeople and dealerships and sales managers, they should all respect the sheer dollar amount of what you're about to spend in your time. So look out for somebody who just comes flying in like a ball of fire. Hey, welcome to so-and-so. What kind of car do you want? You look great in this car. Let's buy it today, right now. That's a fast talker. I'm not necessarily sure I'm feeling comfortable buying from somebody who's gonna be pushy and fast. I wanna be deliberate with my time. I wanna be respectful of the salesperson's time, but I wanna pick out the right car. I want it to be a smooth process. It should be fun. The other thing that you should look out for, other than the fast talker, you should look out for somebody who's not listening to you. They need to listen. Let's do an example here. Hi, welcome to ABC Toyota. How can I help you? Well, I'd really like to get a Camry for me. I want a moonroof. I want leather seats. Okay, that sounds great. How much are you looking to spend? And then they just start talking fast and it's almost like they, okay, I, you want a Camry, you want a moonroof, you got leather. Okay, they listen to me. 
I think a Corolla would be better for you. Let's try to get you into Corolla because we have it on the lot. We don't have a Camry on the lot. Let's get you into something we can we can sell today. But I don't want that. I came in for a Camry and I, I really want this. I've been saving up. Uh, sure, that sounds great. How about a Corolla, maybe a souped up Corolla? They didn't listen to you. They're not being respectful of what your wishes are. They're not respectful of the research that you've done and frankly, what you've been looking forward to. So make sure somebody is being respectful of what you want. The other thing is make sure that it's a salesperson who's being respectful of you and your family members here. I know the stereotype is uh, women especially that, okay, I'm, I'm here looking for a Camry. I wanna buy this. Okay, sounds great. Um, just look at the color and we'll wait till your husband gets here. That is the biggest red flag ever. You want to make sure that you are respectful of every person who comes in, whether it's the children, the grandparents, the husband, the wife, whatever the family dynamic is, you're respectful of all of them. They came to see you and just make sure that they remember the statistic that 80% of all transactions when there's a husband and wife involved, the final decision is made by the woman. That's a fact in the car business. So be respectful, do not overlook somebody. So if you get the feeling that the salesperson is treating you with disrespect, they're not listening to you, they're not making it an easy process, it is okay to ask, maybe, can I talk with the sales manager? I'd like to work with somebody else. It's a little bit awkward, but if you're not getting what you want from that representative, the person that's representing the dealership, you don't necessarily need to look at a different dealership, but maybe a different salesperson. And it's okay to do that. It's, it's like I said, it's an awkward situation, but that's something to look out for too. The other thing to look out for is, let's say you've been working with a dealership, A, we'll call them, online and you have, we work this out at 375 a month on a beautiful Highlander. You call another dealership, oh, we can beat that by $100 a month. No problem at all. We'll get you in at 275. And just remember, there's something too good to be true. We want to make sure that when you're talking about this and this, the first person you talk with is talking about a, a Highlander XLE with a bench seat with a moonroof, with certain options already on it. It has paint protection, it has floor mats. Make sure that the other dealership is talking about apples to apples because I've heard that so many times where somebody said, well, the other dealership said they can beat your deal and it's the same car. Well, is it the same car? Because maybe this one that you're talking about, this specific one, well, the one I had that I was talking to you about that has floor mats on it. The other one might not have floor mats, so don't let it rain because you're gonna get the floors dirty. It has paint protection, it has running boards, that kind of a thing. Well, just make sure, well, I can find you one. If this is what you want, a stripped down one, we'll get you that too, and we're back to apples to apples. I've been respectful, it's been an easy process. Don't just dump it what's too good to be true. Let's make sure we're comparing apples to apples. And sometimes when dealerships say, I'll do this and this and this and this, they may just be trying to get you into their dealership and then they'll talk about the real facts, the real world. So make sure that it's not too good to be true. It's gotta be realistic expectations and realistic results and realistic car and definitely realistic price. So just be aware of all those things. Yeah, that, that is such good information, Jeff. Thank you so much. The, the, thing, the thing about the car salesman experience, and this actually works the same in the service department, it's usually, two bad apples that rot the whole um, bunch, and you will find good dealerships with bad salesmen, bad mechanics, bad service advisors, and you will find really bad dealerships, like at the principal level and at the management level, with good salesmen, good mechanics, good service advisors. But these are some red flags that will kind of stick up and you will immediately know, okay, something is not going right here and you might want to pull back or change your salesman, change your strategy and just be in control of the situation. Remember, you are the customer, you are the one spending the, the money, you are the person who's going to live with that car for 10, 15 years. Don't be rushed by anybody who's not paying your bill. You're paying your bill, you take your time. If you decide halfway, you know what, this is not going well, I need to go back to the drawing board, then go back to the drawing board. Don't start drawing your board right there because, again, you need to be well researched and you need to know where you are going to spend your money. And if you don't feel right about it, walk away and go back to the drawing board. So folks, these are some advices, some really good information that I hope you can 
find useful, you're, you're gonna apply it when you go shopping for your next car. And as we are filming this video, and me and Jeff will share this with you, the car market is kind of upside down with the crazy prices and everything that's going on, the shortages and the lack of new cars, the lack of used cars and the crazy prices. Jeff, what would be your closing remarks on what people should really be aware of in these current strange and temporary time? Right, and that's the thing to remember, it is a temporary time. What I could tell you is, Everybody wants to buy a car right now because we haven't been able to buy cars for the last year or so. So everybody is driving up that consumer demand right now. So if you can wait it out, I would suggest that you don't necessarily buy a car right away. Now, if you need one, just, just wait until prices loosen up a little bit. Wait till the inventory goes back up to levels that you're used to seeing. But I would recommend that you hone in on the perfect vehicle for you, but you allow a little bit of flexibility. What I mean by that is, let's say a dealership has a red Camry LE coming in three weeks. Well, you had your heart set on getting a white one. Well, are you okay getting that red one? If you need to get a car right now, you could get it in three weeks, reserve it with a deposit, work out your pricing already, sign the specifications form, sign the pricing form, you'll probably leave 500 or $1,000 deposit, if you're comfortable with that one, you got yourself a car in one of the most challenging times ever in the car industry, especially for buying cars. Or you could say, no, I want this color with these options. You might be waiting two to four months, let's say. So just be flexible, but don't just give up everything that you hope for in a car. But if you can be flexible in options, then do that. And just work with a salesperson who is comfortable with this process they make the process easy, they're transparent, they're clear with the process from this point on. Communication's everything, my friends. Folks, I hope this video is helpful and informative. Remember, research is king, information is power, knowledge is power. The more you know when you head to the dealership to buy the car, the better off your experience will be. You'll be able to pick out the rotten apples, you'll be able to pick up the bad car from the good car in case you, when you're buying a used car, Research is everything. Don't feel bad about spending 17 hours, even 30 hours over a course of a couple of weeks just to try and decide. Some of your family members will tell you, ah, oh, you're making this a big deal. It is a big deal. You are spending a small fortune. You need to treat it like a big deal and do your research accordingly. You're not buying a small Apple watch or something. You're buying a car and there's a lot involved in that, especially your hard earned money. Thank you so much for watching this video and a special thanks to my friend, Jeff, for joining us today and giving you all the information. Thank you so much, Jeff. I appreciate it. Oh, no problem at all. I'm glad I could help some viewers today. If you picked out one or two things from what I said, we'll consider this a victory. Thank you so much, Jeff. I hope this video was helpful and informative. I hope you learned something new. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing to the channel. Check out some of our other videos. And until the next video, folks, may the Lord bless you and keep you. And you have yourself a wonderful day.